Hello dreamers, how are you doing? This video is a comparison between Australia and Canada in terms of the immigration process. Basically, the permanent residency process of these two countries. I'll cover various aspects like time, point system, the cost, language tests and other points as well. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Hello everybody, this is Shitanshu from Dream Abroad. If you want to immigrate to Canada or Australia, without paying hefty fee to the consultants. Please visit my channel. I've got tons of videos on the immigration process of both of these countries. I do upload videos almost every day now. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe it right now. Okay, whenever we think of immigration, the first question comes to our mind, should we choose Australia or Canada? So I made this video just a few days back. This was the difference between the two countries in terms of cost of living, average salary, employment opportunities, rights and privileges, weather and other factors as well. The link to this video is given in the description box below. But what I could not cover in this video was the difference in the immigration process, which I'm going to cover in this video. Right, so talking of the immigration process, both of these countries have got very similar immigration programs. The program for Australia is called Skill Select and for the Canada it is called Express Entry. They are two separate programs but they are very similar because they rank their candidates based on various factors like age, education, skilled work experience, language test score and spousal factors as well. Okay talking of these factors and these programs let's discuss the point system. So, so these screenshots are something that I shared in the last video as well but it is very important to share in this video because we are talking about the immigration processes. So if you notice both of these countries actually deduct points when the age increases after 30 years of age. So if you talk of Canada after 29 years of age five points get deducted for every year. Similar in the case of Australia points get deducted after you get 32 years of age. So this was something which is very similar, but there's a difference in the points awarded for your job experience. If we talk of Canada, you don't get any point for more experience. Everybody with three years or more years of experience would get the same amount of points. But in the case of Australia, you do get more points. Um, if you have, you know, 10 or 12 years of experience, you will get around 15 points, which is a big bonus for those people who are actually, you know, 36 or 37 years of age and they do have around 10, 12 years of work experience. In the case of uh, Australia, you don't get any point uh, for less than three years, while in the case of Canada, you do get some points. So for those younger lot, you know, Canada, you might score good in the Canadian immigration process. Okay, so this was one point. The other point is very important as well. If we talk of the ICT sector, Basically, the IT sector actually, you know, it is actually assessed by the Australian Computer Society or ACS. This is the assessment body. And what it does, it assesses your education and your work experience and based on which it awards you some points. Now, there's something quite tricky over here, which you need to understand in the case of Australia. If you've studied in IT or CS, still they would deduct two years from your work experience and then they will award points for the for the remaining years but if you haven't studied from ITCS you studied from electronics or mechanical or civil engineering or any other you know engineering trade then they do deduct four years from your uh, work experience so if you have six years of work experience you'll get the points only for two years you won't get any point for the last four years so this is something we know which which can pull down the score for many people. In the case of Canada, there's no reduction in points. The difference in education and work experience does not matter. So this is a big bonus in the case of the Canadian immigration program. You know, this is a point which should be noted. If your education and work experience do not match, in that case, there will be reduction in your points in the case of Australia. Okay, now coming over to language tests. In Australia, only English is the criteria. You have to clear one out of five tests and get good scores. While in the case of Canada, you have uh, you have the option of French as well. 
you can choose either English or French or you can choose both of these languages and appear for two tests. In the case of uh, Australia, we have an option of CAE, OET, PTE, TOEFL and IELTS. IELTS is something which is common in the case of uh, Canada as well. So if you appear for IELTS, you can actually you know, try your luck in both of these countries. While if you're going for a French test, in that case, you would you need to clear TEF or TCF Canada. So these are the French tests. While for those people who are actually proficient in both of these languages, they do have an option of uh, appearing for both of these tests so that your score can get boosted up. So if you select English as your primary language, you can also select French as your secondary language and you would get additional points for it. So this is a consideration for, you know, candidates who are interested in the Canadian immigration program. Now talking of the point system in the case of language test, if we talk of IELTS only, if you get 6666 in all of these sections, in that case you won't get any points, even if you get 6.5 in any of these uh, sections, in any of the four sections, in that case you won't get any point. In the case of Australian immigration, if you get 7777 in all, in that case you would get 10 points and if you get 8 bands in all sections, in that case you would get 20 points. While in the case of uh, Canada, it is a bit different. You know, you would get uh, some certain points if you score 6.5 in uh, all of these sections. Uh, you need to score 7.5 in listening in that case. And if you score CLB9, that is 7 in each and 8 in listening, in that case, you'd get a drastic increase in your points. So this is the case of Canada and this is the case of language test for both of these countries. Okay, now moving ahead, let's talk other differences. So if I talk for a single applicant, I'm going to talk about the different factors. So first of all, cost. A skill select system would cost you something around 4500 Australian dollars while for Canada it would cost you almost half in fact less than the half approximately 2000 Canadian dollars now there are two different currencies but they're almost equal if you check out the currency exchange rate you would find you know they're almost similar now here I haven't added any cost for the state sponsorship for Australia or any PNP program in the case of Canada Obviously, it would differ because it's different for each of the states in Australia and different for each of the provinces in Canada. Okay, proof of funds. If you talk of Australia, there are two visa subclasses. Visa subclass 189, where you need not show any money as settlement funds. While in the case of visa subclass 190, I've mentioned it as con conditional mandatory because it does differ from one state to the other. 190 is the state sponsorship visa where you have to uh, go and work in a particular state for two years. So that rule actually differs from one state to the other in the case of Australia. Some states, you know, just ask you to give a written confirmation that you do have that amount of money. But some states do actually, you know, ask for proofs. I made a separate video on it. I'll provide the link to that video also in the description box so that you can check it out. Now, the proof of funds is mandatory in the case of Canada. Whether you apply for the federal system or you go for the any of the PNP programs, it is a mandatory. You have to show a certain amount of funds, something around 12.5 thousand Canadian dollars for a single applicant. It does differ from one you know, if you're a sp if you have a spouse and if you have a kid as well. Okay, now moving forward, time. Now for Australian PR process, it does take around one year, and generally, you know, they say that this is the minimum amount of time that will take from the start to the last. While in the case of uh, Canada, you know, it is it varies from seven to nine months. Now there are some factors over here that I'm not counting. It's like you entered the express entry pool in the case of Canada and you're just waiting for the invite. If you don't have good score and you didn't even apply for any PNP programs, you know, you might, you know, be there in the express entry pool forever. Similar in the case of uh, Australia, if you have just 65 points, that is the minimum eligibility criteria, 
you know, you might be there in the in their pool, you know, maybe for one or two years, you won't get the invitation. So I'm considering this when you have, you know, good score, you can get the ITA in the case of uh, Canada pretty soon and similar in the case of Australia. So this is something quite a holistic view. Just to give you an idea that the time taken in the case of Australian immigration process is much more than uh, in the case of Canadian process. So to sum it up, there are some differences in the immigration process of both of these countries which might affect one application from the other. You know, some conditions might favor one profile and some other conditions might favor some other profile. So it depends on you and uh, it is your decision which country you want to choose. I hope that this video and this information would be helpful in that decision. So thanks for watching this video. Please click the like button and also share it with your friends if you think it would be helpful for them. Please subscribe the channel if you haven't subscribed it yet. Thanks again.